so uh, what we have seen more than developing a theory of hk multiplicity the one thing is hard to compute is hk multiplicity itself due to various uh, non availability of standard methods so each time we computed hk multiplicity we threw some uh, big machinery or something so this is uh, another approach uh, to the, in this talk i'll talk uh, in this talk i will give and uh, which is i give a notion of hk density function so this works of course uh, in graded setup not uh, generally so so i'll define it so here you have a ring r and a ideal i with the following property your r is a is standard graded in fact uh, later you can see it's even for graded domain this n graded domain it works and i just assume i, I, I r is standard graded right now and i is a uh, oh, this is i is a homogeneous ideal so here r0 itself is a k which you assume to be perfect uh, and characteristic of uh, r is of k is of course p positive so remember what we have done uh, what how we have to define hk multiplicity this is uh, defined as a limit you take uh, q tending to infinity where you are running over all the colons of i q upon q to the power d so here one more restriction is there you assume always d to be greater than or equal to 2 d equal to 1 we already know it's there is nothing much to say oh, so this is this okay but uh, now in our setup r is a graded ring and i is a graded ring so i probe n q is a graded ring a graded uh, ideal so this quotient is a graded quotient so i could have looked this as a summation collected all the pieces and greater than or equal to 0 so in fact uh, when we compute uh, for like a projective curves and all in fact the computation goes by computing all the graded pieces and combining it together <laughs> so here the thing is idea is that instead of uh, looking at the this total length and then going model of qd why don't you just look at the and the graded pieces and no take the limit in a normalized way so let me uh, make it uh, more precise so you fix uh, n and uh, take q to be p to the power n and define a function fn so this is a function which depends on the pair r and i and is given by r positive to r positive so what you do here so it is something like uh, oops i don't know what's happening so so fn of ri of x is uh, you take the length of r iq xq upon q to the power d minus 1 so uh, suppose your uh, your x is say m m mod p to the power n or m mod q whatever so this will go to the q uh, mth piece of the thing so it's going to basically it's going to form an step function so you are looking at a set of step function where so i hope i can draw a picture so for like one q you have a step function like this then we further when i look at p n plus 1 so basically now you are defining these intervals further so so it is uh, like this 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 so here are three function like this and then now uh, i should i use a different color but uh, you'll understand what i'm saying here 
So similarly, you can define fn plus one. So that will be a step function, which are more steps, final steps. So what you have defined so far for a given pair R and I, a sequence of functions. Okay. So this is a theorem. Fn Ri is a uniformly convergent sequence. So limit of F1 Ri where n tends to infinity, which henceforth HKD function, HK density function. This is a compactly supported continuous function. Once I have proved, once we have said that your FNRI is a uniformly convergent sequence, it's now it's obvious that if I take integral over this function FRI x or whatever it is. So it's going to be your EHK of Ri. So this is two. So now you're approaching uh, the HK multiplicity in a very complicated way. Uh, you are looking a function instead rather than the number. So, uh, but uh, this contains more information about HK multiplicity, in it turns out to be. Not only that, uh, you look at the properties. So let me list some of the properties. So the properties which uh, holds for uh, HK multiplicity does hold, which is like uh, if I is in J uh, and R equidimensional here now, this is given then. And so, uh, so I and J, now we are working in a graded setup. So I and J both are graded. So J is contained in the tight closure of is if and only if f of R i is same as f of R j. So this 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 is nothing big deal because he, this is uh, it relies very much on the fact that J is contained in tight closure of i if and only if h k multiplicity is same because this is is very easy to see that. Uh, then uh, other thing is associativity formula. So in fact, you can define a, uh, the notion of HK density function for any finitely generated graded module, and you'll have this formula. So I won't write it here. Now, the third thing which is important and which doesn't seem to exist for uh, HK multiplicity is the following. Uh, let me write here. So suppose you have this uh, pair R and I, R is standard graded and S and J and J over the same field, of course, over K. So, so product should make sense. Then recall uh, segre product. Of R and S is R check S such that which is nothing but the ring, a graded ring and grade components are given by Rn tensor Sn over K. So the name is of course a segre product because uh, if uh, you have R is, proj R is embedded in Pn1 and S as proj S is uh, embedded in Pn2, projective spaces, then uh, their uh, segre product is embedded in another project. That's uh, another projective space and the co homogeneous quadrant will turn out to be this one. So 
so here so the what i am trying to say here is that if i know the density function of this one if i know the density function of this one then i know the density function of the segre product so how is it so recall let us write this frix oh i'm sorry this is nothing here this is you define f of r a polynomial so given r you can define a polynomial ring which is nothing but the multiplicity of uh, maximal ideal x into a uh, d uh, d1 so d1 is dimension of r uh, why am i doing this in uh, mod d minus 1 factorial i don't know why i'm writing d1 d1 i should have said so this is a polynomial function uh, i mean it's easy to compute then the result is uh, f of r check s which of course i can easily compute in terms of the multiplicity of uh, r and s both this function minus this f of r check s with respect to the ideal i check s j so i check j is defined in a similar fashion here so i check j is the ideal in this ring was given by i in tensor j so here it is so this function is nothing but f of rx minus f of uh, rix multiplied by this is a product here f of x minus f of r i'm sorry this is s j x so so hk density function you can say is multiplicative so uh, like whatever the example so far whatever we know of the hk multiplicity in graded cases we know we can compute easily the hk density function for those examples because as i said generally it is computed by using computing the gra each graded pieces so you are automatically or actually is inbuilt the construction so that's one property of course the tensor product is obvious so i won't write it here so question i think this question is actually asked by <laughs> watana bhai i think he is believes it is fri piece wise polynomial function so so whatever examples we had like a projective curve and also so in fact it's a, he expects to be a piece wise polynomial function of degree i mean he of degree equal to uh, dimension r minus 1 <coughs> so for example in the case of projective curves it's a, in fact of degree these are linear piece wise linear polynomials and other examples like a hasebrook surface or toric varieties it's always a piece wise polynomial <coughs> so looking at this invariant as i said remember uh, fr fri is a continuous uh, compactly supported function uh, one uh, one reason we think that it may now some analytic technique may help here why because f of ri if i look at the set of these ones where ri are we are running over the set of such graded pairs it sits injectively to the fourier transform so for your transform i won't define here so it's analytic function here so <coughs> if i the definition of fourier transform tells me if i evaluate fourier transform at a zero it is your ehk of r i so 
we so but i don't know much right now happening here so uh, how much time how much time do i have florian until 9 uh, uh, sorry until the 50 it's a 50 minute lecture so from now on i think uh, 35 minutes 35 minutes uh, huh? yeah oh okay that's a lot actually yeah so anyway so uh, so f of ri as he said is a compactly supported function compactly supported continuous so this we have made the remark about this so he of course it gives hk multiplicity so what about the other invariant perhaps it tells me more about some characteristic p invariant so here we look at uh, the support of the F fri so let me just draw a figure so so the continuous here so this is so alpha of ri <coughs> this is called <coughs> maximal support of f of r i look at the support function so on the other hand there is a notion of uh, what they call f threshold so this uh, i'll just define it so f threshold of m um at i i'm sorry if i am goofing with the term it is f threshold of m at i i think so this is uh, if you definition is the following limit you look at this one so this is another characteristic p invariant very much depends on characteristic p so minimum of r where m to the power r plus 1 is containing i of rho i i don't know why it's coming like this modulo q q tends to infinity so this limit does exist is proved by people uh, i suppose stefani and i'm not sure so so this is f threshold so relation is the following theorem if r is a normal domain or uh, doesn't matter you can otherwise can go to normalization normal domain normal graded domain uh, so my ring is is standard graded henceforth so and r is strongly f regular it did not be uh, everywhere uh, it's enough on the punctual spectrums on say spec of uh, r minus m so it is equivalent to saying suppose proj r is smooth that's uh, good enough for me so it's uh, it's a regular so it's a strongly f regular on punctual spectrum in that case alpha of r i is your f threshold so uh, this this is a useful property for us because uh, one question was uh, this if i look at this where i is swearing i um no a threshold of m where i is varying so this is sorry so where c f thresh take a ideal j and look at f threshold of j with respect to i where it should make sense i mean i and j because this containment issue then is this a uh, discrete set so this was i think question 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 sorry with uh, i think mustada takagi watanabe this question was so now you have interpretation so you you just don't have to look at arbitrary j you have is very specific j smi and uh, this is same as uh, in the graded setup here 
um, alpha of Ri. So you have, so now this, this uh, alpha Ri, or in fact, whole of your uh, density function, in the case when the dimension of R is two, is given in terms of the slope of the hardener cement filtration. And there is a, a result of Giesecker where he constructs a family of vector bundles where the hardener cement uh, filtration vary in a, in a peculiar manner. So, so I don't want to get into technical detail. So if you take that uh, those set of vector bundles, put them in a family, normalize it suitably, by, uh, then what you get, the support of this thing has a limit point. That's what you get. So, so that answer the question. So that's one application. So, so you attach to given uh, pair Ri another invariant called F threshold, and you you have some information about that also. So, so this is so whenever you know E H K or F of Ri, it does give a the uh, many characteristic P invariants. That's one. And coming back to EHK, I know that smaller the EHK in whatever way, like uh, for as far as regularity cons uh, you consider or F rationality or F regularity, uh, smaller it is better. That's a matter of smoothness. But uh, you saw in the case of vector bundles where the you are looking at a non, actually you are looking at a smooth curves in fact. That's, and it tells you about the vector bundles, the uh, semi-stability behavior of the vector bundle. The smaller your EHK, your this uh, Suzuki bundle is going to better behave vis-a-vis -vis semi-stability behavior. So, so this is a this is a strange relation happened. So, semi-stability of vector bundles. So. Now, other thing, uh, I have what, seven minutes now, Florian? How much time do I have? I think 20, more than 20 minutes, I think. 30 minutes around. Oh. 28. <laughs> 28, but you can, yeah, I mean, Stop. whenever you want, it's, it's okay. Yeah. So. So, okay, so, so now we come to a case of a projective toric variety. So now uh, the reason I'm sticking to projective toric variety because the corresponding ring will be standard graded ring. If I take any affine toric, uh, toric ring, the ring won't be a standard graded, but a graded ring. And now we have a notion of density function for arbitrary and graded rings also. So one can work it out that. So we have not looked at it. So now look at this projected toric variety. So what is happening here? So you have a X pair, pair X and Delta. So here X is a projective variety, projective toric variety. And um, delta is an ample. It doesn't matter if you don't know, but I'll just say Cartier divisor. So what I'm getting it that this pair, if you have a projective toric variety in an ample divisor, it will give you a ring. So which we call um, RXT maybe. So. I think some people call section ring, I think, coordinate ring. So uh, what about it? So, so uh, what uh, one studies is the growth of uh, HK multiplicity here. 
as you take higher and higher power of that so of course that you had to little bit normalize so say kd so i'll just explain very soon the significance of this so perhaps so uh, i should write it this way on d factorial kd minus 1 so uh, so in fact this this kind of uh, growth of the hk multiplicity m to the power k this has been studied by watanabe yoshida and hens also i think so so here we are saying that this this exists of course that's okay but uh, that's not the point here what i'm saying that i want to yeah let me to k tends to infinity it exists and uh, just bear with me so is a funny number d minus 1 d <coughs> very complicated so <clears throat> the point is this uh, you on the left hand side you have uh, the growth of the hk multiplicity this this number is well known this is a polynomial ring it's uh, well behaved and so this is the main thing so looking at the growth of the hk multiplicity how it grows so it's always bounded by some number uh, which is uh, which is uh, characteristic free which is the multiplicity of the ring and the dimension d is a uh, okay or uh, dimension of x is uh, d minus 1 i think d minus 1 should be greater than equal to 2 i think here <clears throat> that is there but the interesting part uh, is when the equality holds i'll explain this Oh, sorry. If and wait a minute. This is not very interesting. What I want to say is the following. Okay, all right. so uh, if you look at the toric variety you you'll see there is nothing toric varieties don't take care of uh, characteristic actually there is no characteristic involved but still even in that case hk multiplicity has something to say so it's saying that it achieves minimal the growth actually is uh, normalized growth is actually minimal if and only if the pd i'll just explain this this there is a, a con convex polytope which will tile the space rd minus 1 so what happens uh, given any projective variety uh, with uh, if you look at and fix a t carter divisor it it means it corresponds to a rational convex polytope so and vice versa if i have a rational convex polytope for example let uh, uh rational convex polytope <clears throat> then by multiplying suitably m into p becomes an integral convex polytope so it has all the vertices integral uh, convex polytope further you can choose uh, so call it m1 now m to be say d minus 2 into uh, m1 so this this is a very ample uh, there is a notion of very ample polytope 
convex polytope. So point is uh, given a polytope suitably multiplying by m, I can make it very ample convex rational polytope. So once you have such a thing, that means very ample, that means there is a projective variety x and d such that your pd is actually your polytope mp that is there then you have a corresponding ring, ring of course xt and you have a notion of uh, normalized multiplicity hk multiplicity ehk so so growth of this is smallest which is given in terms of thing if and only if the convex polytope p tiles a space so this uh, this property doesn't depend on m actually so this is uh, well defined so it doesn't depend on m so I haven't just I haven't said what is con, uh, polytope ties the place. So for example, if I take x to be p two and uh, d to be o x one, and if I take o x two, it will just uh, magnify the same polytope. So it's no, so so it will corresponds to the that polytope corresponds to a triangle. And when I say ties the thing, so basically there is a lattice. Uh, as a bad picture, uh, so at each lattice point to dis start your polytope. So the, here it is each lattice point. So on each um, square, and so and let it grow. So when you multiply by say, lambda or something or something, it will grow. Here it will grow like this. But after it grows beyond this point, it will start overlapping with another one. So this doesn't tile the floor. On the other hand, if I take x to be say p1 cross p1, so uh, with uh, your o1 cross o1, I think uh, the, that's your. I think I'm not sure actually. Uh, then your p p of d is actually a square. If I take o1 cross o2, then it will become a rectangle, not a square. So this will definitely will tile the floor because I can start here and uh, for high enough, this thing it will cover up. So now given any d, uh, there exist finitely many. This is, I don't know what's happening. This is, uh, This point. I'm sorry, this is Rational polytopes, I mean. Which tiles the space. So the given D, of course, the number will grow exponentially depending on D. So so like for uh, in case of R2, there's a square and uh, some uh, this kind of hexagon, I think. Like this. There are only two of them which will tile the space. So that means given there will be only finitely many projective varieties with a uh, uh, Cartier divisor, which has a minimal HK multiplicity growth. So, so that's another example. And of course, uh, this polynomial, uh, this polytopes do help in computing the HK multiplicity. So you can compute it. It's not like looking at the convex polytope. So you have, but this is uh, actually not unknown. This is already known by I think uh, Ito. Uh, this uh, thing, in fact, it did for any toric ring and so Watanabe also, I think. Uh, 
So what we do, HK density function for this one, polytope. So this is very nice here. So you you have a, a convex, uh, if you take a projective toric variety, it comes with, I said, a, a convex polytopes. I'm so sorry, sorry, this thing. So this is your convex polytope, in fact, and you take a, you lift it to a, say, XY plane and um, take a cone over Z. So this is, so that. So this is this is blown up. And this is, so this area here is the multiplicity and the HK multiplicity, you take the, the same cone, you shift it to all the lattice points. If it has a lattice point here and here, so you shift all these cones, same. So the Ito so theorem says that you take the, this area, which is little bounded area, that is your multiplicity. And the density function says, if I take the cross section of these areas, this is your HK density function. So that's a very use, visual way of seeing it. So I think, uh, uh, what should I do? And perhaps, I think I improved uh, on my writing skills so become a little faster. So, because I tend to write very slow otherwise. <clears throat> so, I'll stop here, I think. So, all right. Thank you very much for the lecture, Vijaya. Let's thank the speaker, please. Let's see, are there, are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question real quick. Okay, go ahead, Kyle. Um, so I was very interested to see all the analytic techniques that you demonstrated for um, Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity. In your opinion, do you think that that's kind of the next frontier to make Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity work more nicely is to try and investigate the analytic properties of these functions? Uh, you mean HK density function? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think so, uh, actually. So, so what happens sometimes you quite don't compute uh, HK density. You may not be able to compute HK density function itself. But the very property of, uh, I don't, I'm not saying it right, but HK, very pro the way it behaves you cannot compute it, but you know how it goes up and down in various ways. You can say something about the HK multiplicity itself. So one example I would like to give is here is this one. So I think quadric hypersurface, I think Aberbach and uh, Inescu have worked a lot in this. So they know. So this is the simplest example. So this is a quadric hypersurface. So there is a famous conjecture of uh, Watanabe and Yoshida. So you know, every every if I take any local ring, I know the HK multiplicity is greater than or equal to one. One is the smallest number. But their thing is, suppose you take a ring A with a characteristic P dimension D, such that uh, A is of course formally unmixed, A is assume that formally unmixed, we don't want anything, such that then N not regular. If it is regular, of course, it is um, uh, its multiplicity is one. So suppose then EHK, I'm sorry, EHK of APD. So let me give this ring a name, RPD is greater than or equal to EHK of APD, RPD. And this is equal to greater than or equal to one plus uh, M uh, M on D plus one. I'll explain it. So, so M D plus one. So you take a sec X plus ten X, and then you can write it as a M N. Oh, what M N X N? Whatever. And 
okay perfect so that's a coefficient of that so this is so that's a that's a part of the conjecture i think this up to uh, d less than or equal to 5 or 6 has been proved i think in inesco and aberbach had been part of this i think so uh, so, so i am mainly interested in this one what do you want to say here so the problem with characteristic P computation is one thing that uh, suppose even if somebody asks how do the SP tends to infinity or something, how EHK behaves or something, this kind of question, just think of it. When we start thinking about the question, means we need to have some formula for HK multiplicity in hand to compare. We need to have some ground. If you have no for nothing, then how do you compare? So here what uh, one has done, you come com look at HK density function. So this is a example I'm giving you of RPD. So, okay. So this requires all maximal Cohen Macaulay uh, module, whatever factorization of the quadric hypersurface structure Shiva of quadric hypersurface, etc. Spin R bundles and all. Whatever it is, the thing is, this example tells me I don't know the HK HK density function entirely of this one. It says, but I know up to some point. So there will be something. And I'm just so here is this. So I know that I can compute the HK density function for up to here. So let me change the color. So here, this reason I know the density function, this I know. But when I go here, this reason I don't know. Okay. It's for one P. So But uh, then if I take P greater than P prime, uh, so this is for P prime, suppose, then for P prime, uh, I'll know up to this my maybe. But I still don't know. I have no information about this. But I know this, this function is bounded. This is. So what I'm able to prove, one is able to prove that you can still say that EHK multiplicity is there is a comparison ground between them so this is uh, so this reason keeps shrinking so when uh, okay let me i hope i'm making sense so ehk of rpd as you take limit p tends to infinity it exists uh, it of course it exists i mean um, this is stupid that is already proved by monsky but uh, is greater than equal to one plus m n plus one because as p tends to infinity this this reason will come to some i mean it keeps shrinking and then you can assume you know everything for p infinity case so you can and this this reason uh, on the p for the p prime this is bigger than this uh, zero case the p infinity case so this all the regions are bigger than that so i at least i know this without without actually comparing i know that this bound will happen so that's the one place even you entirely don't know density function, you can still predict about the thing. So that's one thing. So uh -huh. I thank you. Yeah. So I hope I made some sense of my statement. I, okay, there can be places where you don't know HK density function enough, but is there still enough data? I Means you can go outside a measure zero or a small set, which is good enough for you. That's it. Oh, all right. Any other questions? I have a question. Hmm. Go ahead. You go. There was a formula about the Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of uh, kth power of maximal ideal hmm. uh, minus uh, multiplicity of uh, m to the k over d factorial. Yes, yes. Yeah. So in this formula, do you expect that the Hilbert Kuhn multiplicity of powers of maximal ideal mm -hmm. uh, will it behave like a polynomial for large yeah. k? Is it expected to? This is a graded situation you have, right? Yeah, yeah. Every this is entirely graded situation. Yeah. But suppose you have a yeah. So. Uh, what, what is the expectation of EHK m to the k? Is it a polynomial mm. in k? 
for large k at least hmm hmm जनरली so mm-hmm. but uh, i really i don't uh, i can't i often i can't vouch for correct statement actually here <laughs> so of course in, in dimension 1 that is a trivial question because it is multiplicity no no dimension one the thing is i i this this graded ring no i, I had to i work in yeah. gra- greater than equal to 2 actually right. because so, the, the uniform convergence thing doesn't work for dimension 1 yeah. so at, one yeah. thing that uh, you have proved that this limit exists for graded situation ha huh, this so, limit this limit exists for graded any graded ring left hand side yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, so, what he is asking is different ha huh? yeah yeah that is yeah, more one can ask the same question in local rings and there is a paper of watanabe and yoshida Uh-huh. where they prove yeah. that uh, they suppose yeah. you take a rational singularity of dimension 2 yeah then this ehk mk is a polynomial in k dimension 2 ah d- okay dimension 2 oh. rational singularity they uh, oh. yeah dimension 2 so uh, ehk mk or pseudo rational they even proved it for mm-hmm. two dimensional pseudo rational local ring uh, mm-hmm. in characteristic p then yeah. uh, the hilbert cool multiplicity of uh, all powers it's a polynomial in k uh-huh. but but uh, they they don't say anything about higher dimension actually even a two dimensional uh, local ring you don't know much about hk multiplicity it is correct so yeah i they have what they have done as uh, this uh, this thing what uh, they have said this difference is of big order kd minus 1 that's what their thing was i think i'm if i'm correct so this is more uh, this particular uh, in the graded situation the re- this result is more refined of course but uh, local ring it things are harder for two dimensional mm-hmm. there is no satisfactory answer so yeah mm-hmm. so yeah actually it will be nice uh, if uh, of course i'll be very happy if people work in uh, hk density function and find something i do expect to uh, i was trying to see more analytic connection but uh, not uh, that much in the i mean the hk going to the hk multiplicity of powers of maximal homogeneous ideal might uh, simplify or give a better hold on the problem Oh, no no not power of i am talking about this uh, in general hk density function mm-hmm. uh, this uh, and what are the other invariants i am talking about that powers actually i don't uh, uh, beyond that uh, we don't uh, have much uh, clear answer right we i mean projective toric variety is the simplest case right so we tried that one i mean simplest means it took works a lot of work but <laughs> uh, i mean it's a canonical thing to see but uh, Right. Uh, I mean, there could be a geometric interpretation for uh, HK multi- HK density function of uh, powers of maximal ideal in graded ring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. So you define HK density function oh, for no, any no. graded ideal. Uh, gra- no, no. Graded no, no, no. Graded ring, it is not clear. Nothing. No, no, no. I don't think so. In fact, there might be examples where nothing good happens there. The, the toric variety it is nice because it keeps blowing up basically you are blowing up toric variety means you are looking at a cone and mm-hmm. that cone keeps enlarging so that's how we managed to control uh, this growth of the m to the k but uh, i was hoping for any grading the similar kind of trick should work and we can just look at the points and delete but it uh, i think it was just wishful thinking i i couldn't do anything about it i mean i was just telling 
the people who are many students here so i was hoping that density function maybe it may give something more also in mm -hmm. fact uh, karen smith's uh, student i think alapan or something he has looked in this kind of thing in a reverse way means he is looking you sh you sh can say about the fourier transform from that side and coming back here so yes. yeah yeah all right yeah. are there any other questions all right i hear no additional questions so let's thank uh, vijay one more time thank you very much for your talk thanks for listening yeah and then uh, the school will continue next monday with yeah. the tutoring session for vijay trivedi with regard to hilbert cos multiplicity so uh, see you everybody then okay yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah.